so hi, good afternoon. My name is Elise Dick. Uh, I am a policy manager at Meta, where I work really closely with the teams that are building avatars and identity systems for our future metaverse vision. So today I want to talk to you a little bit about the work that we're doing at Meta to create that foundation for people to identify, represent, and express themselves in the metaverse. I'm gonna walk you through our vision, uh, what we're doing today, and how we hope to move forward to achieve it. So I know that the term metaverse is being thrown around a lot at this conference, and I probably don't have to take a deep dive into it for everyone here, but I do wanna take a minute to talk about what we mean when we say metaverse. So we believe the metaverse will be the successor to the mobile internet. It'll let us feel like we're sharing a space together. And this is why identity is so important. We're not just going to share words or videos or pictures, we're going to share experiences. And that's why we need to be able to represent ourselves. It's going to be a set of digital spaces, which includes 3D experiences that are all interconnected, so you can easily move between them. It'll feel like a hybrid of today's social online experiences, but it will expand beyond two dimensions and let you do things you couldn't do in physical space with people you couldn't otherwise be with. And you'll be able to access these spaces across surfaces. VR, AR, mobile devices, PC, smart displays, and perhaps even devices that don't exist yet. But importantly, the metaverse won't be run, built, or owned by any one company. Many others will be involved in this effort that will collectively build a metaverse and the identity systems that will underlie it. And this interoperability and collaborative effort is really what we need to make identity and representation happen. We believe the metaverse, building it together with many other creators, developers, and businesses will enable us to build better connections for people. Obviously, this is a lot different from how things work today, which is why we're all here. Uh, if you think about the way it works right now, if you go into a virtual space, uh, you can perhaps create an avatar, you can perhaps acquire items for that avatar, you can get a new haircut, you can get a new appearance, but you can't necessarily bring that with you elsewhere. This is really limiting for identity. The way that it works in the real world, if you go into a store, you can buy something, you can walk out, and you can go about the world with that identity on you. The way that it works today in virtual space is not like that. It would be like if you stayed in the store, walked around in a couple circles, and then had to uh, put on a new identity the second that you left. The metaverse is going to stitch together these currently separate digital spaces and bring continuity to them. So be, you'll be able to bring your right avatar and any identity and assets with you across experiences if you choose to do so. We see identity and expression as core components of the future metaverse because we'll participate in the metaverse through an embodied digital identity. It's a combination of identifying information that we're accustomed to today, like profile information, your name, your demographic information, and embodied expression through your avatar. This embodied identity is necessary to achieve the feeling of presence that the metaverse can provide. It'll allow us to recognize and interact with each other and even do things together that we couldn't do in physical space. Just as the metaverse will open up experiences that might not be possible in the physical world, it'll also let you to sh allow you to share and express your identity in ways that you might not be able to in real life. Obviously, you can choose to create an avatar that looks just like you. It can completely mirror your physical presence. But you should also be able to choose to alter your identity and alter how you express yourself depending on the context and the people that you're with. And this is something that the metaverse can make much more easy to do than you might be able to in physical space. No matter how you choose to represent yourself, your identity in the metaverse should also be dynamic. Just as you may want to change how you represent yourself for different experiences in the real world, you'll probably want to do, adjust your embodied identity for virtual space as well. And finally, you should be able to bring your identity with you across the metaverse should you choose to do so. You should be able to bring it across different experiences, different social spaces, and show it to different people. This decision should be yours to make, and the people building the metaverse and identity systems today should enable you and give you the tools you need to do so. So clearly, one of Meta's key focus areas for our effort to build a metaverse is around representation and expression through avatars. In the future, we'll identify ourselves not only with our name or images of our faces or physical presence, but also through these embodied avatars that we create and that can translate our, or simulate our physical movement into virtual space. Our avatars are meant to give us identity, expression, and social presence and shared experiences within and eventually across these experiences. 
they're necessary to participate in immersive spaces, not just something that's nice to add on, like an, uh, an avatar might be with your social presence today. And that means that avatars should represent the diversity of the people who will be in the metaverse as a way to embody either their real or their chosen identity. So as we think about the identity structures that will be needed in a future metaverse, we're approaching identity management and identity expression as distinct but interrelated components of your metaverse identity. Identity expression, or excuse me, identity management is what we think of today. It's your profile information. It's your name, it's your demographic information. It's what you might choose to share on your social media today. But I want to talk to you about this embodied ident identity expression, which is a new layer that lets us more authentically and holistically represent ourselves in the metaverse. The avatar experiences that we build today are going to build the foundation for this embodied identity that people will use. But that what we have today is really just the beginning. Unlike identities in the physical world, identity expression is a combination of the choices that we make and actions that we take related to our digital identity. And identity expression introduces important considerations for our overall approach to how we, people can represent themselves. We need to think about identity expression differently than we've thought about identity in the past because of these really unique elements. First, it's deeply personal. People will have a close relationship with their avatar, especially when the avatar is translating their physical movement. Second, it's dependent on context. People will want to have a different identity or a different form of self-expression depending on where they appear and to whom they are sharing their appearance. And third, it may reveal sensitive information in a different way from other forms of identity expression online. People may choose to share things about themselves by, say, wearing religious headwear or using a hearing aid on their avatar that will reveal information to people around them and that they may want to keep private in certain spaces. Identity expression is also unique from other aspects of digital identity because it includes both self-selected and embodied elements. Some components of identity expression are intentionally chosen and self-selected by users. They have the ability to precisely set what their appearance looks like. This includes fundamental elements like your face shape, your body shape, hair color, these kinds of things, perhaps the pose that your avatar takes uh, in a still photo. It's also assets that your avatar wears or brings with it to in any virtual experience, including assets that you might want to keep persistent, like a hearing aid or other aspects of your identity. And there's also expression content, things like screenshots or images of your avatar or stickers that use avatars that are really a static representation of your virtual identity. But other components are not self-selected and are necessary to achieve this feeling of presence through avatars in VR. These are embodied elements of identity expression that you may choose to include as you interact with others in virtual spaces, but won't have this granular level of control over because some of it will be involuntary movement. This sets physical motion and nonverbal communication to self-selected expression elements, which are critical to achieve this feeling of presence and social interaction in the metaverse. Some components of this are tracked, things like hand tracking and hand gestures, but it can also be simulated, like simulated facial expressions. And these combine to create this embodied presence and embodied expression within our virtual environments. I want to take a moment to talk about what this looks like on our platforms today and how we're taking this and building toward a future metaverse vision. Like other identity management tools, uh, on our 2D apps, people can use avatars across apps and surfaces. You can use an avatar on Instagram, Facebook, and Messenger today, as well as create an avatar in VR. Identity expression on Instagram and Facebook are mostly self-selected. People can set avatars as part of their identity, like a profile photo, um, but they don't have that embodied real-time component. People can express themselves to others on these platforms using tools like avatar text posts and stickers as well. But on these less immersive platforms, expressions are preset and self-selected. Now, VR avatars are really starting to introduce this embodied expression that I'm talking about. They're the primary way that people will recognize you in VR spaces today and in the future metaverse. So earlier this year, we updated avatars across VR and 2D to have the same look. So an avatar that you create on your Facebook profile will look similar to an avatar you create in VR. And this is an important step to creating a persistent identity across surfaces, regardless of the device you use to access it. But instead of self-selected intentional expressions, like choosing to share your avatar with family and friends, 
Your embodied identity may reveal information about you to anyone you interact with in VR. Your identity expression in VR is enhanced with embodied expressions, which let you interact more authentically with your avatar as you meet other people in social spaces. So we have these avatars on multiple surfaces, but the experience isn't necessarily the same, and there's some really important considerations that we need to look at when we're looking at how users experience their identity on our 2D services versus 3D uh, using avatars. First, your 2D avatar gives you another way to express your identity on Facebook, Instagram, and Messenger, along with your profile picture and other identity tools. It's an add-on as it works today. But your VR avatar is how you will show up across apps and experiences, and it'll be a central component of your identity and rep how you represent yourself in the metaverse in, and today in games and social experiences and anywhere you use an avatar. Your 2D avatar is also private to you until you share it. So you can share it with family or friends, share it as a post, but it will always respect your existing privacy settings on the platform that you're using. But your VR avatar is public, so anyone you interact or share an experience with is going to see it. You don't have as much control over who sees how you choose to represent yourself in virtual spaces. Your 2D avatar can only be used on the surfaces where it's available, Facebook, Instagram, and Messenger, and for a limited set of purposes. But your identity expression through your VR avatar will be context specific. You'll be able to represent yourself with your avatar in various apps and experiences, including non-meta apps that use our avatar SDK. And all expressions from your 2D avatar, from how you look to the poses you make, are self-selected. You will experience activities and interactions through your VR avatar, as if you're really there. Your avatar will also mirror your real-world actions, such as hand gestures, and this means the sense of embodiment that will make your embodied identity, identity feel much more intimate and personal when you're in VR uh, rather than on 2D. Now there are some common threads across services that I hope persist as these services become more unified in a future metaverse. Your avatar should authentically represent you as you want to appear to others. It doesn't have to mirror your real world appearance and you should have the ability to make it as close or as far from your appearance as you feel comfortable. And you should be able to keep certain characteristics, like your face shape or your skin tone or your hairstyle, while easily changing others like your clothing and accessories. So you can have a persistent identity that can still be adjusted based on context. And in the future, we hope you will have one consistent avatar that you can bring with you across services and experiences to maintain one identity across all of the metaverse. So as I said in my introduction, I do policy. Uh, and so I want to talk to you a little bit about the policy considerations that we are bringing to our work as we build avatars for future identities in the metaverse. So given that your avatar helps you embody yourself within the metaverse, it's important that we have an inherent sense of safety and security in the space as well. We also understand that this kind of digital identity will be unfamiliar to many people and may in fact be their first experience entering the metaverse when they create their avatar before they go into a virtual experience. Addressing these concerns is an important part of our effort to build the metaverse responsibly, and we use our responsible innovation principles to really ground this work. The first one is never surprise people. This means helping people understand how they can safely and authentically represent themselves in the metaverse, even if it's their first time building an avatar on any surface. The second is provide controls that matter. We want to empower people to make meaningful decisions about how, when, and to whom they represent themselves in the metaverse. Third is consider everyone. This includes providing choices that meet the safety, privacy, and representation needs of a diverse and global user base for our avatars products. And finally, put people first. We want to understand and address the impact of these identity systems beyond their use in virtual spaces. These principles guide our work, but identity is challenging to navigate. There are important trade-offs and unique challenges that we also have to consider as we're building out these systems. We need to offer customization options that allow a diverse range of people to authentically represent themselves through their avatar. We're continually seeking input on the choices people can make to better meet the representation needs of all of our users, and we're actively looking for further input. So if anyone would like to discuss that further, I'm happy to meet you after this. We also want to give people tools to make decisions about where, how, and to whom they represent themselves. User education is a really important part of this. And we need to think about how to bring new users and existing metaverse enthusiasts along with us in the journey to build these systems. And finally, we should implement tools and policies that address the unique safety and security needs of users in spaces that have embodied expression and conduct. 
avatars obviously present new integrity concerns and new ways that people can cause harm. And we need to be thinking about how we are addressing these unique concerns. So this is where we are today. And we're focusing on building tools for represent representative, dynamic, and cross-platform identities. Last year, we overhauled avatars in VR to make them more expressive, customizable, and diverse. And earlier this year, we rolled out those 3D avatars on Facebook, and Messenger, and Instagram. If people choose to do so, they can use the same avatar across our family of apps, making these virtual representations a part of persistent digital identity as a component of their metaverse identity in the future. On top of this, our Meta Avatars SDK is now available to all Unity developers on Quest, Rift, and Windows-based VR platforms, which means that developers can focus on making great products rather than their own avatar systems, and people can seamlessly transition between experiences with a virtual persistent identity. These are important steps toward our vision of the metaverse as an interconnected digital world, but it's really only the start. VR, AR, and immersive technology can and should be for everyone. And we're constantly working to improve people's experiences in these spaces. Along with others, we're building the metaverse to be something that billions can benefit from. That relies on improving access to reliable internet, hardware, and experiences. And it means working with others to build the metaverse in a way that everyone can move seamlessly between virtual experiences, regardless of how they're accessing those spaces. Our long-term vision for the metaverse is an embodied form of the internet, which offers a feeling of presence or being together with others in virtual space. Avatars will be a core way people will express their identity or identities across the metaverse and embody the feeling of presence. While the metaverse is still a ways off, the opportunity to start exploring technologies that will power this space are in front of us today. And part of this should absolutely include creating identity and expression systems that will allow people to authentically represent themselves across a future metaverse. This is absolutely a collaborative effort, and I look forward to talking with you all further and working with you to build these systems. Thank you. Thank you, Elise. We're now taking Q&A. If you have a question, please go to one of the stand-up mics or come to me, and we'll use the hand mic. Hey, Elise. Oh, it's loud. Um, I noticed in your talk, you're often talking about like your identity, your avatar in the singular form, but then sometimes you talked about like various ways you could express yourself. Um, you know, I use Meta Services today, and like often find it grading how. Um, it wants me to represent myself in the same way across like my Instagram presence or Facebook, and I often don't want that. Um, I was thinking about maybe having like a library of avatars or expressions, and like this is not the way I would show up to my friends, or like if I go in a different context, and even like my language or the uh, just the way I present myself to others can vary based on the context. Um, is there a, a tension between like? representing yourself or you in various ways? And what would you think about a concept of like a, like a library of avatars? And for each occasion or each context, like workrooms versus Horizon Worlds, you could select which one um, you wanted to express yourself. Yeah, great question. So I think that multiple identities is absolutely a part of how people are going to navigate the metaverse. And it's something we should be building for our social systems today as well. Um, I think that people should have the opportunity and the option to have a persistent identity. So if someone wants to, they should be able to use their same avatar across apps and services. Uh, but having that option is also really important, having the option to, to select different identities. So I think that's, that's certainly one model. Um, it's, we also have to think about how it's going to work when people have, if people are creating multiple identities and multiple surfaces that ultimately start working together. Um, <laughs> We need to start thinking about how we're going to organize that and bring those identities together. So we do need to think about you know, whether it's a library or it's like one persistent avatar that has a set of assets that go with it. Um, these are all questions that we need to start addressing now as we move toward a more interoperable identity system. Cool, thank you. Thanks. Hi, Elise. Uh, great talk, thanks so much. Um, I'm really curious, when it comes to uh, representation for people with disabilities, um, I know things like a white cane can be very instrumental in communicating to other people that, you know, that person is blind, for example, um, which can often be a good thing or a bad thing, depending a lot on context. Um, so I'm curious, uh, what are your thoughts on that area? And also, 
um, what types of information do people need ahead of time before they enter a space to choose how they want to be represented there? Yeah, great question. Uh, identity from disability and other you know, aspects of identity that people might want to show outwardly is a really important aspect of how we're thinking about our avatars. Um, you're right that people might want to disclose disability through using a cane or something in some spaces but might not want to share it elsewhere. And one of the things you have to think about is how we are not just in a, the instance of disability, but in any instance, how we're sh showing people where they're showing up, right? We wanna make sure people understand they have a cane in a social experience, but move to a workplace and they don't wanna have it there. Uh, we, want, we need to make sure that there's a user education point that lets them know that they may want to change something about how they're representing themselves. And I think that gets to your second question too, is I think user education in a way that helps people make choices about their identity that isn't just like, hey, you're going to a new experience, change your avatar, and actually gives them the chance to, to change their appearance, change their identity, um, and understand who's going to see it before they enter an experience is what we should be building for. Thank you. Hi, thank you very much for the talk. So what about impersonation? Like trying to impersonate someone else and anonymity, and what happens when someone is trying to play you? And in, in certain con uh, contexts, you want to kind of validate that the person that you're really interacting with is that person. Yeah, no, that's definitely another concern around avatars, right? I think it's something that we've all talked about this week. Um, there's an inherent tension between having to verify people and allowing people to navigate the metaverse with, uh, anonymously if they choose to and make decisions about their identity that might not tie back to them if it's a space where they want to remain anonymous. So I think that part of what, while we're building these metaverse identity systems, part of what we have to think about is how we are going to, if, how and if we want to do verification. And if there might be a different way to do it than necessarily just signing up with your name and going forward from there. Um, so I don't have a direct answer for you, but I think you raise a really important point that we need to be thinking about as we're building these. Hey, uh, thanks for your talk. Um, I have a question about the interaction data. So if you want to represent a virtual avatar, you have the, the eyes, the head movement, the hand movement, and uh, that's different for every person. So in theory, that would give one the opportunity to create a profile for every user. Um, how does Meta plan to use this interaction data, for example, to tailor ad experiences or something like that? So right now, we aren't collecting that, like, I don't, I'm not sure what specific data you're talking about, but, but right now we don't have a lot of, like, motion data mm -hmm. um, that we're not, we're not doing, like, full body tracking, so we're not using that yet. Um, I, to be honest, don't work a lot on the ad side and don't have a direct answer for you, but I'm happy to talk to you afterwards about this. Are there any other questions? Um, I don't want to steal it if anybody else had one, but uh, I'm, I'm very curious when people in VR with like full motion setups are interacting with um, people who are on desktop or mobile and are just getting you know the face, um, how do you think it's important to, to represent kind of what those are? And I know in VR chat you see sometimes there are people walking around like this and then there are people that are actually Mobile, and I'm curious if that's important to, to ambiguate, yeah. disambiguate. That's where the simulated aspect of embodied expression comes in, right? We're gonna to have to have some stuff that isn't a direct translation of your physical movement um, because people are going to be accessing it from different surfaces um, or may just not want, may, they may be using controllers instead of using hand tracking and that kind of thing. Um, so I think we need to think about how people are do it, expressing themselves and having that embodied expression even if they're not using a VR headset with hand tracking turned on, for example. Thank you for uh, the talk. How does um, a persistent identity influence uh, uh, community standards or other user-facing policies about behavior that's acceptable in VR spaces? Yeah, great question. Um, I'm not sure how, it, how persistent identity is part of this necessarily, but we ha do have our conduct in VR policy that everyone has to adhere to, and so that's one of our first steps in working on these, like integrity concerns around embodied expression. Um, I don't think it necessarily matters that it's a persistent identity uh, because everyone has to adhere to it. So if you have five different avatars, all those avatars are still 
under that same uh, conduct policy. And I imagine that would be true for, for many different surfaces. Um, I'm not sure that necessarily having a persistent identity would deflect from that. I, I guess to add on to that is like a persistent identity across metaverse uh, platforms. Got Whether it. it's within Meta or Oculus or another company's platform, how does that change how we might think about policies? I think it'll, yeah. yeah, it'll have to be a matter of, of different spaces in the metaverse deciding how they want to reconcile integrity concerns. Some might want to have, you know, strict integrity concerns that align with what a lot of other people are practicing. Some people might want it to be different. And we just have to think about how people are transitioning between different spaces uh, and what that will mean for the decisions that individual spaces and individual platforms can be making. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elise. And thank you for the audience for attending this session. I will have a short break as you allow to move to another session or even better, stay here.